Guys, time to get a new uh, magnifying glass. There's some got to clean that. Some residue on this thing. <laughs> That's the eye from the eyeballs. I'm looking at it. Yeah. Hey, uh, let's do a video. I had two of them in there before. There's only one now. Let's do a video and talk to people about uh, numismatics, which are coins. That sounds like a good thing. Well, hello, everybody. I seek to educate and entertain through my journey of collecting coins and stacking precious metals. I encourage you to subscribe and please stay with me on this journey. I am Spectacular, the Silver Stacular. Here we are again. Um, Valentine's Day came and left. We're heading toward Easter. Uh, for those who may come to visit me, after the 20th, I'm going to be away for a couple of weeks. And I have people call and come in all the time, and I appreciate it, but just know I won't be here the end of March and the first couple of days of April. So if you're driving here from Tampa or you're flying in from England, I'm not going to be here. Okay. Hold off your vacation. Yeah. Have the plane circle. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in the shop? What's new? Uh, counterfeits have been coming in again. Not counterfeits. Yeah, the game. That's no, not good. Now, this one's really dangerous. Are they getting better and better all the time? Well. Now, this is a counterfeit. This is a counterfeit. This is counterfeits. These are counterfeits. Like I said, if you slip this in with a, you slip the five of these in with 20 of the 64 Kennedys, I think they're going to get passed. That's a counterfeit. So I'm going to start with this one just because I happened to grab this. But this is interesting. You got the hologram PCGS, you know, slabbed coin right here this is and this is a carson city mm -hmm. that's a 700 hundred dollar coin i mean like right away what do you have a uh, a slab i had two of them when i when i was looking at this and i compared it the color's wrong yeah the color is off it looks it looks uh, like almost like a newer those 2021 um morgans it just reminds me of that that fit that i don't know like faded kind of look to it what years? Okay, what year is that one? Well, this is 81. 18 well, here's an 82, 64 plus CAC. Oh, excuse me. Anyway. <laughs> All right, so what do we got here? This is slightly dull. It's not as bright as that. But this is fake. It doesn't pass the machine. Uh, when you put it under the microscope, the surfaces are wrong. The CC is pretty good. It's a dangerous CC. Usually they don't get the CC so well, but look at the holders, and that almost would sell it at any show. It's crazy. Let's try to get that CC. The guy had five of these. What do you like about the CC itself, the, the actual mint mark? The way that it's formed is usually a telltale. The 78s look like circles. Uh, if they're too skinny and drawn like a pencil, too thin, they're fakes. They gotta have a little cartoonish fatness in the middle to them. Okay. I'm gonna look at the CCs on this one. This is an authentic, real deal. Yeah. That's just, what's well, scary guy? It is, because like I said, the guy, this guy sold me, this guy sold me a bunch of stuff, and this was his. This, this, and I just kept throwing him back stuff. I mean, we, I bought like $2,500 worth of stuff, but I must have threw back at him 400 worth. And people are just faking, I mean like 1964 Kennedy's really are valuable. He buys a lot of stuff online, but you had five of these. And I told him, I said, I'll give you a few bucks for this. I said, I need one. For, see now, if you put your nail in here, this is a sticker. It's okay. not in, it has to be underneath between the plastic. Well, that's a telltale sign. This one too, you can feel it. So, but it's really done well. And it's, like I said, in, it would fool a number of people. Yeah, And I at mean, 700 a piece, somebody's a crook and says, I'll give you 350. He's only got to be right once. That's important. And he's had a good day. So when this came into your shop, um, how did you identify it? Like, what was the quickest part that you go, oh, this has to be fake? I, I looked at it, then I looked up the price, then I looked at it closely, and it looked too shallow. It was way too shallow. The face looked too shallow, the color is off. Uh, and then I had, I had two other certified ones in PCGS holders, and then it, was, then it just jumps out at you. Then I got the machine out. I mean, you know, you get five strikes against you, I ain't buying this, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I told him, I'll give you a few dollars for it. He goes, it's okay. And he just gave it to me. So, you know, I gave him a few dollars for it, and I use it for education. Just like we're doing now. I, I'm, I'm a little bit 
weirded out about the story just because he brought it in with other things too oh yeah he had a whole suitcase full of stuff he slid this across the table he probably paid a good he amount for it right a whole bunch of them and then he was just cool with okay just a few bucks for that no big deal yeah 10 bucks i give he said fine do you think he knew it was real or i mean fake i'm sorry i think he suspected uh i i looked at everything i mean he had these which are almost these are almost cartoonish look at the size of the 2020 on that as the compared to a uh you know a silver eagles the real size of the numbers uh once again they jumped out he had about 10 of those i think it's a little off too the the flip is a little this <laughs> is a little off because it should flip straight and it's a little crooked. You notice that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the, they, the they, these are smaller and tighter. The other numbers he had were teens, and they were a lot easier to see the difference. That's crazy, huh? And these jumped out because they were funny. Because they, they almost didn't stack. They're almost, they're almost a three-dimensional. Like, they, they get in the way of each other when you put them on top of each other. They feel a little light. Are they a yeah. little light? Uh, I believe they are also. But just the overall coin just jumped out. 12 and a half grams or yeah. so? That's 11, true. 6. It's a little light. Yeah, and the silver dollars were only, uh, were only what, 22 grams instead of 27. These, they were way... You got to use the scale. You got a lot of tools to use beside the, uh, beside the machine. But when they're encased like this, a little harder, what you can always do is get another uncirculated silver dollar in a PCGS holder and weigh it. And it should be the same, but one gram difference you may not catch. Yeah. You know, <coughs> especially with the newer ones, they made the cases slightly bigger. Like this way you can't use the NGC boxes to uniformly for use them universal box. If you don't know what you're doing when it comes to collecting and you still want to be a collector, one good thing you can do is go to a reputable coin dealer. Absolutely. Yeah, go to a help. dealer. Usually they'll take the time to talk to you. I mean, I get phone calls from all over the country all, all the time. And I take the time to talk to them. Um, you know, and you, this is education. We're trying to teach. That's, that's part of what we do. It's not only, it's not only you know, eight, uh, you know, 12 year olds and 16 year olds. It's, it's everybody who's still learning. And you get the people who come in and they get really ripped off. Um, the same with, you know, when they're buying gold off of you. Um, it's like when the guy brings you a gold coin and he goes, you know, how much you give me for this? And I look at it and it jumps out of you, it's fake. And you know, he goes, well, I, I just bought that on the internet. It's a, it's a $50 gold eagle. You know, it's 1850 or 1900. What'd you pay for it? 950. Well, there's no cheap one ounce gold coins. You paid half the price. What do you think? You know, the packaging came from China. Well, what can I tell you? That's true. You know, I'm not making this up. It, it's the real deal. It's like they, when they put the notch on the bottom of the, on the new Silver Eagles. You don't think that some industrialists in the Far East took a notch off the fakes and it's just, okay, now we're done, keep running. You know, how long did it take them to fix that? I wonder if that's like a hard thing to replicate is the one notch off the reed. No, so, I would not think so. You wouldn't think so, but why did the U.S. Mint decide that that's the security feature? I don't know. I think on the new ones, they've changed the positioning of the reading now. I'd heard they put it at 3 o'clock or 9. Well, how do you know that? So anywhere... <laughs> So, you know, you get a couple of people and they're talking, and, well, just take a read off anyway because they don't even know where it's supposed to be now. Jeez. I, I, I don't know. It's, you've got to have, you got to have your scales with you. you got to have the magnifier. I, you know, and I use a microscope on, especially when I'm buying rare type coins or double dies and things like that. Um, and I was, I was home. I had COVID two weeks ago. And I was out for all of last, the week before last, I was out. All of us got sick. And I had time to kill, so I was breaking up a bunch of proof sets. And because silver proof sets are hard to sell. And I was just putting them in rolls and stuff. And, I, and I'm looking at Gray Sheet. And here's an education for you. 
I don't understand the rhyme or reason to this completely. But here we go. Why, why are proof sets hard to sell? Why, why is that, do you think? The silver proof sets, because you're paying a premium over silver. Um, well, I'll buy all the proof sets you got, silver proof sets at $41. For 2008, 9, 10, all of them, 41. Sure, I'll buy those. You Let me show you the breakdown. Okay. Here's gray sheet. This is the Bible for what we pay for coins, okay? Or what they should sell at. The 41 silver proof set. Retails around $41 in here. And I usually get 50. For the whole set? The whole set. Okay. $41. Gotcha. Now we break it down. Here's what the 2009 proof set looks like. This sells separately in here for $625. This sells, the president sell for $750. The silver quarters are $30, which is about right, because I usually sell proof silver 25 times. Okay. The half usually is 15. These two are six. This coin, which is right here, is 10. When you do the math, it's $73. It's in here for 41. So all of this sells for 41? Yeah, in together. the book. Yeah. Together. Uh -huh. But if you piece it out. It's like the story about the old car, the parts are worth a lot more. I mean, when you do the math, you can almost you can get your $41 without having this dollar, this $30 piece of silver. That's crazy. Here's a dollar fifty. Here's a dollar fifty worth of silver in there, and this adds up to $43 of it huh. in pieces. Uh, the same thing is true for the 2008 set. It's about $37, but in pieces it comes out to something like $63. I, I just don't understand the rhyme or reason. I know I've talked to wholesalers who, when they buy up stuff in bulk, they can't buy the silver stuff because they want to pay X amount of money. And anybody who knows his coin says, I can't sell it to you for gray sheet because it's worth a lot more money in pieces to me. Mm. As you can see. I mean, I had a couple of nines, a few eights. They're, they're 10 and $12 a piece by themselves. It, it just doesn't pay. But I thought I'd show you that, and that's you know, it just, it's crazy. Yeah, that's, and that's once, good advice for people. Well, this is, this is what it's about. It just doesn't make sense. This is interesting because these things... Now, in the 09 set, when they did the proofs, they went back to the old composition of 95% copper, 5% zinc. But look at the colors you got on that's this. beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. I do a couple of them in there, like for $6 or $6.50. But they get outrageous colors. I mean, it's only like, they just look beautiful. When I was uh, coin roll hunting some years back, I found entire rolls of these right here. Not the proofs, obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the mint sold them for ridiculous money. That yeah, was awesome. That's, that's what they do. Cool stuff. Now, when you get coin world, you also got to take everything. You got to do your homework. You got to know your business somewhat. Here's the new coin world. This is the new gray sheet. March. Now, this came a few days ago. Came while I was at home sick. Here's the prices that they have in the front of the thing. I don't understand why they can't update. And I understand a lot of the stuff in here is based on the prices of metals. And they can't do it, you know, two days before mailing. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it stays the same. I mean, your nickels, your coppers, your pennies, your proof prices are pretty basically the same. But here, gold is 1923 Okay. And today it's what? 18... Was it like 1850 1848. 1850. 1850. Yeah. But look at the price of silver. 23. It's 21 something? Yeah, it's off by $2. Two and a half dollars. That's, that's hard with that's the markets huge. to move that, yeah. You know, when you're trying to look up... When you're looking at price and you're trying to figure out prices for people, or if they got gray sheet and they come here, look at the price in the air, but you know what? Gold is $80 less than that, buddy. <laughs> and I don't blame them, but you got to explain it. I still don't understand how, you know, why this can't go to print maybe eight or ten days before. Because you're looking at, I'm looking at 1923. I mean, by the 2nd of February, it was at 1868. You know, by the 4th, 18, 1850 by the 13th. Two weeks before the end of the year, the end of the month. It was a hundred dollars difference, seventy-five dollars difference. <coughs> I love how you keep that sheet just to kind of remember how things 
have been moving. Yeah. Well, it gives you an idea because it just, it you know. Well, you know, you I was in here a month ago when you offered me. Yeah, but a month ago gold was a hundred dollars more. Right. Or less. You know, and it just isn't that. It just doesn't work like that. Yeah. Hey, uh, guy. So, you know, we decided to do something, you and I, um, a collaboration to where we put silver rounds with our logos yes. on either side of a silver round. That's coming true. That's that's happening, right? We yes. haven't got them in yet. Um, as the video comes out, I might be able to get them to you. I don't know, whenever they get shipped to me. But, um, you know, as we're talking here right now, I'll show people the video of those being made. But what do you think about those rounds? I think it's a great idea. I've had people ask me before for it. Uh, it's not about vanity. It's people asking for it, and we're going to put out. Uh, well, we're going to put out whatever the market will bear, and it's going to have your star and you on one side, my owl logo, and coin guy on the other side. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's cool, uh, and I, I think we'll be able to move them. I wish I it was cheaper for people, but it's an expensive oh, process yeah. just to make these things and everything included. Like, it's not cheap. You got to cut the dies. You know, it, it's everything involved. Yeah, these four pennies cost seven dollars. Yeah. So I guess there's something to be said for that. Our rounds are beautiful. They're they're proof looking. I mean, I saw, it, yeah, they're nice. I think that's going to go over really good. I uh, can't wait to get them. Thanks for doing that with I'm me. Go, I'm sure. It. Thanks for, for putting me in on it. Yeah. Uh, I think we'll have. Uh, I think we're going to start having pre-orders. You know. <laughs> try we'll the pre-orders. What well, are you going to do? Try to put some in the uh, the cases here. Well, not yet. I got to get them first. <laughs> They're gonna, you know, what's gonna happen. They're gonna end up selling out. Everybody's gonna go. I need some more of those. You're gonna be like, hey, tough yeah, luck. And we'll put the next, <laughs> the next bunch out. And like you said, people don't realize you got to cut the dies. You got to pay the guy. You got to pay the metal. Then when we sell those, because they are not government issued, we have to. I'll have to absorb the tax on them. You know, this, it's, you know, at, at fifty bucks a coin, the tax is three twenty-five. Yeah. You know, it all adds up. Uh, but it, I think it's going to go over pretty good. I, I'm excited to do that. And we uh, we both cool. hand signed the certificate of authenticity yep. for everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, it's going to be cool. I think I'm 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 proud to do that for people. Um, let's talk about something else, and it's uh, related to you as an influencer. Do you ever think of yourself that way? You know, I've heard that said to me in the beginning. I did. I never really thought about it, uh, and I guess in a way I am, especially. When the young people come in, or I'll get the parents come in with the kids and they said, my child has now started collecting coins because of you. Or like I told you about that one, um, I did that, it wasn't a great American teaching, but it was uh, a junior honors class in history in New Jersey. And I did a, a Zoom thing when I had all these little pictures and I was talking to the class and then they sent me a thank you, and it was a cover page where he approached the board, and they started a coin club in the high school from the history angle. And America, I think that was great. And I think I, that is an influence, I guess. You I think that's pretty that. cool. Absolutely. I think that's good. I do it for the love of the game. I mean, it's like, uh, where did I just see this? Here. Here's the theme of National Coin Week. What is the theme? Our heritage, our America, our money. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah, that's what it's about. Yeah. You know, that's pretty cool. It's the Pan Pacific gold coin, the $50 that's one of gold my dream piece. coins that I'll just keep dreaming yeah. about. I'm pretty I know sure. somebody who just got one of them. I'm envious. Yeah. That is a cool coin. If you were going to get that coin, would you go for the octagonal or the round? Octagonal. Yeah. yeah I want this one. Even though the round's rare. Yeah, but yeah. I want, I would want the octagonal. Me too. I know a person has gotten one. I'm willing to trade a 95 proof Morgan for it. You would do it. Yeah, I would trade for that. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. It's just so so unique and crazy. It's just, different. Yeah. But, but yeah, influencer. That's you. Yeah. Okay. So what okay. do you think about um, you know if people were trying to help you get a title, uh, maybe uh, 2023 um, most uh, influential person in numismatics you know i made fun about that with the top 100 and and i understand what you're saying and i'm flattered about it and i appreciate the nomination but i don't think i have a chance i just don't think i have a chance I, i'm i'm cynical about that 
It's like when I talk about the 100 people that are in the book and 95 of them are either heavy advertisers, they are the grading service people, or the auction houses. And I guess in a roundabout way, because I spend a million dollars in certifying coins or advertising in coin world, that makes me an influencer? I don't think so. I don't know. I find it, we were talking earlier about it, and I happen to have a book here, and I'm not in this, but that's okay. <laughs> but, you know, I was pointing out just in the first few pages, look at this. You know, NGC. Wow. Oh, look, here's his ad. <laughs> He's got it's ad almost right any it. side ad is the same guy. Is that... Do they have his ad? Is it seriously? Probably. I didn't even yeah, know. Yeah, that's his name. Yeah. yeah. That's he's, he's most influential, but there's his ad right here. So advertising yeah. dollars. So what work. is this? Is this a $15,000 ad? I mean, it's all through the book. No, okay. Can we do it again? There's no way, right? Legend? That's the, that's the publisher. That can't be it. Yeah. They're going to keep doing that, aren't they? If I just flip pages, I'll find it. More ads? Yeah. Corn World Retired Editor. Okay, I'll give her that. Yeah. Yeah, this is Denley's of Boston. I know who he is. I've done business with him. Well, I've looked through some of these. There. Some of these people I've never. Mm -hmm. This is this guy. This is this guy. And that's his, his ad. That's right his there. ad. Oh, man. Uh, well, this, this is your problem, guy. This you is him. Throw, throw down a couple thousand dollars and you can do A couple be of thousand? I bet you it's 10 grand to do this. <laughs> Goldberg. Goldberg. What? Got the same name. That's crazy, huh? Wow. It's all through the book. Yeah. Miles Standish. I mean, I know him. I understand that. Yeah, he's a good dude. But, you know, it's funny how there's an article in the paper and Nathan brought up and says, 10 people from NGC who are nominated. Well, they're doing their job grading coins. Does that really make them an influencer? No. I don't I, know. I've seen that list. I know the, the one guy, uh, you know, Salazar, I think it is. And that's. You know, like I it. said, and the other thing, the other thing that I saw this weekend, and I appreciate everybody who nominates me. And I think it's fun, but I think it's futile. Here you go. This is going to be the May 23 issue. Now, this goes to publishing the beginning of April, which means in about three or four weeks. This ends on the 15th. You think they interview and tally and do everything in two weeks? A hundred people? That's going to be rough. It's a lot of know. work. I'm cynical about that. I think the hundreds picked already. I'm sorry. Well, listen, we're going to try anyways. Yeah, thank at you. Thank you a at lot. At the very least, I'd like to see you on the list of people. Okay. okay. Maybe, That'll be cool. Maybe not even in the magazine, but on the list of people that should be on that list of 100. How about that? I just think it's part of everything you ever see. It's politics. Yeah. I know how we've been talking about thievery and things being stolen. Yeah. This was in the uh, numismatic news the other day. Uh, coin safety tips. Yeah, coin show safety tips. Yeah. There you go. And I was just reading an article in Coin World about how they're going to up all the security at the shows. It's the people who last summer were asking me if I was going to do Chicago or the city outside of Chicago <coughs> where the money show was. And I said I wouldn't go there if my room was free. They had six robberies on the floor. How many were outside where you had the old men going home? That's crazy. And they were waiting to jump them. I mean, a city like Chicago? Yes, it's, it's one of those things where I keep mentioning that everybody knows that this is money. This yeah. Is, this is valuable stuff. Well, there's big signs that say the money show. Yeah. You know, they look at each other. It's so get your blackjack, get your gun, I'll meet you around back. We'll catch the guys in the parking lot. People the still, old men coming in or going out, one way or the other, you're going to jump them. People still use blackjacks? Well, whatever. <laughs> I can have one back here. Jeez, oh, keep, that, keep that personal. But, Bring your blackjack uh, out here. <laughs> you know, it's just a crazy, crazy world like that. It is crazy. Um, yeah, as, as we were talking, um, oddly enough, I just got a text message from the person who's making our rounds asking me where um, they want me to, sh or where I can ship it to. So... It's, co it's coming. It's getting close. Okay, okay. It's I, good news. I'm excited about that because I think it's cool. Yeah. It makes things interesting. It keeps the, the blood flowing. Um, these are new coins I got. The, Which ones? Uh, I showed you the one. Break them out. Let's see these things. How about that? I like new coins. You know, I've seen that. Uh, I want to talk about those dimes that you got over oh, here. Oh, yeah. That was a big collection I picked yeah. up. That yeah. was 
Some of the most breathtaking dimes I think I've ever seen. We'll talk about that right after these ones. So these are all new. This one I'm, you don't really see. This is a certified PCGS holder. This is that one that we saw earlier, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so thick, it's huge. Because usually what they do is just strap on that little yeah. like, label right there saying it's graded. Yeah, that's, that's heavy duty, isn't it? Yeah, it's bulky. Bulky. That's cool, though. I guess the box to put those in, we're only going to have 10 of them. I would collect something like that. Yeah, I think it's it's kind of cool. Yeah. It is kind of cool. What else is new in here? Oh, uh, look at that Indian head. Yeah, there was some Real pretty nice ones. One. That was from another collection I bought. I got a pretty red Indian. May I? Uh, Go ahead. Thank you. Here's an AU-58 Flying Eagle. Oh, that's so pretty, guy. That, that's so pretty that it looks fake because you just don't see him like that, you know? You always see Even him all this, brown like, Sometimes it amazes me the price. This is a 1956D. I probably got uncirculated rolls in the back. But you look this up and that's what they go for. You can't certify this coin with PCGS for 20 bucks. Absolutely it just not. doesn't happen. Tell you what, even like... You know, a, a wheat scent. We see wheat scents. That's no problem. But in this condition, looking like that pretty, it's just so awesome. Who's gonna? Somebody's gonna buy that. Twenty-three bucks. That's like a no-brainer. That's awesome. Just to see what the coin could look like. You know, this collection I picked up was that last Monday. Which one? Um, I bought this big collection right after we were gone for. We were out for a week. Last Monday was a crazy day here. Yeah. Between the silver, the gold. We bought a lot of stuff, and we bought collections. Um, well, your dime collection? I got dime, but it was, it was all dimes, but I also got two trays of barber dimes now. It was all about dimes. I even sold a couple of these already. I know who you sold them to. The beauties. I know who you the sold them to. The steel. You sold them to me. <laughs> I was cherry picking. Now these early ones. Let me uh, let me see a couple of the really nice ones because again, with mercury dimes, you don't you don't get that. And you get those early ones in mm -hmm. high grades, you know. So here's the first year, 1916 mercury dime with split bands. I mean, now when it's split bands, you're looking for that that one right in the middle, right? In the middle, well, all of them. You want them all. The middle one, of course, you got to have that one. Now, I've heard that people try to fake those. Is that true? They try to, like, take something real thin and they try to... A needle? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, well, some of them would be worth it. I mean, you picked up a couple of coins that had good prices, and I didn't even charge you full gray sheet on them because I couldn't believe the number. To be honest, a lot of these. When you look at a number like this and you say, okay, full split bands, gem 65, the gem is there. This price is probably a hundred less than Gray Sheet said. I just, it's crazy. I should send a bunch of these in to be certified. You really should. They're super pretty. You got the pretty ones. You got the blue ones. Yeah, well, that rainbow coloration that they had, I should actually put them in the video because people are going to be like, what did he get? They were some of the best Mercury Dimes I've ever seen in my life. That beautiful split band 65 blue 1916 d oh so pretty and i got him right here from the coin guy <laughs> yeah man, that's some pretty ones it is 410 i think this was like 570. now this is a breathtaking this what? is just a breathtaking coin that's a, it's an expensive one huh yeah this is 65 is 510 because of what they sell for 510 to 585. you can't question the split the split bands are there but this is a six this is probably a seven hundred dollar coin in gray sheet. Let me see here. Now, when you're going through these and you're grading them, do you value them at a six? Because that's, I mean, it's your opinion, right? Yeah. Well, I grade them, then I look up the values. Okay. I don't do it at the same time because that's going to influence you. Gotcha. And I don't want to be an influencer. <laughs> but uh, you are an influencer. But I, I don't like that terminology personally, and I know that I'm an influencer too with the YouTube channel. Well, that's, a, that's almost like the Kardashians. They're influencers, I guess. Oh, not but good But some ones. of these wackadoos that are on TV, they're influencers. I like to be thought more of an educator than an influencer. Uh, I'm trying to teach the next generation 
or the generation that comes in and, you know, they don't know what they're doing or you're trying to teach them and you try to show them. And that's what it's about. And like I've said before, I bought a collection the other day. I told you about that older woman who came in with a couple of gold bars, didn't know. This woman came in and she had a bunch of stuff and she needed money. I won't go into too many details, but she needed like $300. And she had $1,220 worth of stuff. A lot of 90%. No rare coins, just... You had to sort through all those bank cardboards where he slide the dimes in or the quarters. But I found over $1,200 worth of stuff. And she just broke down crying. Yeah. This woman just was crying. And there was, a, there was another customer in there. And he told me how he felt. And it was emotional. And he said the same thing. If you, if you had gone to the wrong person, they would have, she would have been crying if I gave her $500. But, I, you know, it's just a matter of, of what we do, and your reputation's important. And, uh, but I, st I still say that. If you're that old coin dealer out there, and you're going to leave your, your coin collection to your nephew, give him a heads up. You know, just give him a heads up. Because if you take this to certain stores, and you go in there with $50 gold eagles, yeah, they'll gladly give you 100 apiece for those. Right. That's a fact. I had somebody in here yesterday and told me that story where he was in a pawn shop and uh, the other guy just left and the woman was bragging to him that she just bought six $50 gold eagles for $600. Because the kid said, how much you got to get? Would you give me 100 each? And she took it. He said, we just turned around and walked out. So what? That woman just made 10 grand. That's crazy to me. It, this, but that's crazy out there. Yeah. Give, give him what he wants, but it's not what he deserves to have on you know, the value of those. That's, that's sad. Man. And I've had more than one person when I've said, no, no, you don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> man. This dark tone one's actually kind of nice, too. Yeah. Those are cool. Very cool. So now with this collection right here, how did it go? Like, the guy came in, and he's like, hey, I'm done with my collection. Here I was you go. about two hours. It was a couple of boxes of stuff. It was a lot of stuff. It was dimes. It was barber dimes. It was silver dollars. It was... But why is he getting rid of his stuff? He's, he's older now. And he travels. And I guess the kids don't want the stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was like a $10,000 deal. I mean, there was a lot of stuff. And then goes the homework into going through it all. And there were no fakes in there. But, uh, and it was Bob. I guess he liked his dimes. Well, it's, you know, everybody has that thing that they like the best, and dimes are cool to me. I mean, I like dimes. I wish they were bigger. <laughs> Make it easier for me to see. It starts right there. Those are so pretty, huh? A lot of these I had, but I was able to fill a whole nother tray. It's funny how many Barber dimes survived in high grades. I have a lot more AUs and unks and Barber dimes than quarters or halves. In halves, you never see them. They're far and few between. It's so wild, seeing those nicer conditioned barbers. Yeah. Very cool. one s Some of them are surprising, some of the numbers. No 94S, but got to pick that up at an ice cream shop. Bar barber Dime, the set, is a pretty large set, right? There's, yeah, there's over 100 coins. Yeah. I mean, they made a lot of, you know, you have a PDS and O at one point. Uh, you have multiples of all kinds of coins. The 94S, legend has two dozen were made, and they're supposed to be about a dozen known. Uh, it was one of those where the, the mint director printed out a few just to show, show somebody, to show dignitaries after dinner, and, uh, and he gave them out, or they disappeared, whatever it is. But they were never really put out there. And I don't think, I think a VG is out there for like $600,000. Really? Yeah. That's wild. It's, it's a funny thing. You confiscate the 1933 gold coin, the saint, but why aren't the 94 S's confiscated? They were never issued as business strikes. It's like the, uh, you know, the 1913 V nickel. It was never issued. It was one of those things that somebody decided to turn on the presses and make a few, but you allowed them to be sold. Not that I want them confiscated, but... I kind of like to see the 33 gold pieces 
to be out there for everybody to get. Sure. You know, we need a few more $10 million coins. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, throw some uh, 1964 peace dollars out there. Why not, right? <laughs> I've heard that story. And they'll come in over there. I'll get those. Yeah, the There's somebody somewhere getting a permit to make those while we speak. Yeah. We've seen those on the channel before, those fake ones that you had of the 1964 peace dollars. 64 peace dollars. It's like when you go to the flea market and there's those 18, uh, you know, those 1799 uh, silver dollars and, uh, and they've got reeded edges. Now, it just didn't happen, as I've said before. They didn't start reeded edging coins until 1836. It was half dollars and the back dollars. But, uh, you know... But that was later. It wasn't in 1700s. So when you point that out, the woman goes hysterical and starts yelling at me. Oh, what do you know about coins? And, you know, <laughs> you, you pissed her off. You know everything. You're the coin guy. Coin guy. Those, uh... I, was looking, I was going through, like I said, I go through the magazines and I look for material and things. It triggers memories of other shows I went to. These are the Dutch Lions. Very common coin. They weren't the most favorite because they were slightly lighter than the bit. pieces than pieces of eight. But they're big coins, they're big chunky coins. Yeah, they're pretty. You know, here's pieces of eight. This is so much detail and so like... And they're so cool. Neat. I have one at home. Uh, I would have brought it in, but I didn't know until later you were coming today. Oh, I'm sorry. But I do it. have one. But I remember, <laughs> I remember 30, 40 years ago being at shows where there'd be a pile of them. And they used to call them the slave money because that's what the Dutch got paid for to bring slaves here. Oh, the colonists didn't bring them. You didn't know the Dutch and the Portuguese brought slaves here first? I'm sorry. They didn't teach you that somewhere. <laughs> I didn't get that Let's not even get, that get into that. <laughs> but that's what they used to call it. They used to call this the slave money. That's what they used to get paid in. It's crazy. But you can see, this has a lot of character. It's a cool coin. And I remember when you'd have these and they would have a couple of chop marks mm -hmm. and they would treat it like junk. They'd give them to you for 20 bucks, 25. But now the chop marks give them character. Makes the, they make them cooler. I think they're kind of cooler with the chop marks. Well, you know, it goes back to that, um, you know, coin collectors love the thought of where has that coin been? Exactly. And now you have evidence that it has been places. Oh, certainly. Yeah. You know, when you, and I've seen that in, I have... I never, the one guy who's the expert never got back to me about this. Here's a chop mark or a counter stamp on an ancient. On an ancient? He wanted to buy that off me and it wouldn't sell to him. The only ancient I've ever seen with a counter stamp or an Assayer's mark on it. Yeah. You know, it's probably worth 100 and 150, but it, I just thought it was so cool. It is cool. And you wonder what the story is there. Yeah. That's the interesting part. Right. Maybe somebody still knows. I think it's just a cool just a cool thing. Uh, I saw this the other day, too. What is this? Paper money in the news. No, this wasn't the article. We don't talk about paper money enough on this show. we got to start doing that because I know we have a lot of uh, paper money freaks out there that love My son money. sold a bunch of bills like this. He had this same bill. But I believe his had all fours. The Black Eagle? Yeah, all fours, and it was an unk. Those are all fives. And I don't remember what he got for it. He had seven digits, and that's what that has, seven. Um, but there's a number one. That's crazy, huh? I mean, they go for big numbers, 7,700. But this big one, I had this in my, I mean, I saw his. And Heritage came here to, to get the bills two years ago. And I told the guy, you're lucky my son got this and not me. You will not have gotten this from me. And I, I still think Brian got ripped off. I think that bill was worth half again more than he got. But it was that first auction of last year after it had been shut down for 18 months. And it was just so much material hit the auctions at fun that, you know. And he had a lot of these, you know, solid numbers like this, which I happen to have some over here. I saw a guy today on social media. You never know if anything's real or fake on there, but you know those in that right there over here are they're more older style dollars or bills, I should say. Yeah, well, um, they're this, this, like this one on on social media 
was a modern bill, but it was serial number one. You think that because it's modern, it's valuable? Yeah, it's still valuable, of course. Well, that's what I got over here. Fancy numbers. Fancy numbers. That seven are modern. sevens, 1977. How crazy. Now, if eight digits are worth 1,800, how come it's not worth 200 to have seven digits? And these are all gem unks. Here's a whole bunch of eights. Here's the backwards. Sevens. That I sold the other backward one. Um, I love how you've labeled them fancy numbers. Six eights. <laughs> well, that's what they call them. Fancy notes. I think they said that in here too, right? Probably. Solid numbers. But yeah, I have uh, I have another bunch of these. But these are some of the high. There's some continental currency. Yeah. And then 1780s. A little colonial currency? Yeah. Continental colonial, sure. I just think continental breakfast when I think continental. You know? Mm -hmm. Which I'm not a fan of. I prefer the buffet style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah not like the buffet. <laughs> Eat. God bless America. Hey, uh, I have some questions. Actually. By the way. Oh, yeah. All of the... All of that jewelry I had, uh -huh. it's gone. What happened to it? I sold it. Oh, you sold it? Nice. I sold the whole lot. I didn't get quite 300, but I'm happy with it. Yeah. And I was able to pick this up as part of the trade. What do you got there? This is a valuable book. Oh, the typeset. The typeset book, and this one's brand new. Have you seen my finished typeset? It's not, you know, great condition coins, but it's finished. And this even that. has a cut. I even, I'll even help you with it. I don't have it. that page. And that makes the book. Yeah, I need that. How much? Uh, how much does that got to go for? I see it go for as much as a hundred and a quarter. Because Dansko's not making them anymore. Yeah. If you walk in, I'd take a hundred for it. That'll sell quick. Yeah, I think you just can't find it. No. I mean, I took it as not part nice of the condition. Trade. Yeah, mine's not wow. that condition right there at all. But guy, I have some questions for you. Um, go ahead. A couple of fans out there said, "Hey, questions for Coin Guy." So, <clears throat> just gonna rapid fire these off to you. David wants to know. Your personal favorite coin that's in your collection? Uh, my 1794 halves. Favorite? That's that's your number one thing in just a half dollar. Yeah, I've always liked half dollars. Why is that your favorite? I, I like the size of them. I like the early busted stuff, uh, bust dollars, bust halves. I made a mistake and I didn't pick up a bust quarter. Oh, God. 95. I cut the end of this finger off on a bandsaw. Jeez. And I went to uh, comp. And I didn't take any time off. I worked through it, big bandage, everything in the kitchen. And I got like a settlement of $4,500 for it because I didn't use any comp time. And I was at a show in Queens and somebody had a 1796 quarter. And I still could kick myself. Because I'm looking at this, the guy's calling it an AG. I think it's a solid good. And he wanted like $2,200 for it. What a mistake. I took it over to Annex. The guy said, yeah, it's real. That's all I wanted to know. And then I just didn't pull the trigger. I just stepped back from it. Mm. And that coin's worth ten grand now. That stuff will but haunt you. But the fact is, it's, it's not even what it's worth. I wouldn't have sold it, just like my 1794 halves. It does haunt me in a way. It's the only 1700 quarter you can get is a 1796. And even in an in a AG, it's probably worth six or seven. And this was a good, I think it was a solid good. And, and I drew blood and I had the money and I didn't, I'm mad at my, I, I'm getting aggravated with myself right now. And I, I should have had that. Sorry, coin. sorry guys, sorry for bringing up the I, past. I, I, see your, uh, I see your shipping department back there. Slowly hopefully, I turn. Hopefully they're working hard. <laughs> You know, it's funny that you mentioned like the one that got away because there's many times I'll walk into a store and I see a coin or a piece of silver, gold, whatever the case may be. And I'm like, ah, I can do without it. And I get back to my vehicle and I'm sitting there just in my head going like, why didn't I pick that up? Maybe I should pick that. Maybe I should go back, go back tomorrow. Like, and it just, it's driving me and crazy. And it's usually gone. Yeah, it's gone the next day. And, it, and that's the way it'll happen. It'll always happen. And I, I thought about it like the next day, but it was a one day show. It was a Saturday show and I I just, I'm annoyed at myself because I didn't buy it. Sorry, guy. Sorry. I picked up two, <laughs> P, most of two piece dollar sets. So I do have a couple of 21s. Oh, 21s. Yeah, I usually don't have them. I can't keep them in the store now. Yeah, I like, I like the piece dollars a lot. I'm trying to squeeze those yeah, out, this man. This is a really nice one. I want to see those in I collector's hands. I'm that in to be certified. 
Might as well. If that comes back a four, it's like 12. I got the 09S. There you go. The 28. Pretty coins, guy. You actually yeah. have some gold in stock now, too. Uh, I got a, a bunch of these. I bought a roll of these uh, back last Monday. I've got less than half the roll left. Um, I don't but at least the, I have some gold. Not in love with the country, not the people, the government, of course. Gold's gold. But uh, the maple leaf is a beautiful coin. It's a pretty coin. Oh, it really is. Oh, yeah. They do a good um, job on that one. It really is. All right, let me give you another question here. Uh, different name right here. Butter wants to know your advice for younger collectors 20 and up. <sighs> Collect silver because you get the, boast of, the best of both worlds. If everything goes to hell, at least you got the silver. At the same time, you can collect it by dates and have the joy of collecting the coins. And you have the silver as a fallback. I'm not talking about 28 peace dollars, but if you collected peace dollars, Morgan dollars, see, you know, walking Liberty halves, Franklin halves, you're putting dates together. And in, 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 in circulated, they're not very expensive. And you got the intrinsic value of the silver all the time. And I still stick by my guns. I say silver in the high 20s this, this year and gold in 2200, 2300. There's too much crazy stuff happening in the world, and people see it. Um, you know, speaking of crazy, my brother is running for another office now. Oh, uh, Ventry? Over yeah. there? Okay. What kind of office are we running for now? County Commissioner? County Commissioner. Okay. If he couldn't be governor, which I have a lot of fun with that, unfortunately the guy is in the hospital But now. And no, I'm not making fun of him for that, but he never should have ran, honestly. The governor of Pennsylvania they hired. But then again, they got a senile old man in the White House. So what can I tell you? <laughs> I mean, it's just in your face. It's in your face. But he's running for uh, county commissioner. Interesting. I guess it keeps him busy. What else are you going to do with what yourself? What are you going to do, right? You know. What, yeah, the, the what's guy, the next question? That guy in the White House, man. It's like, I say we're talking about it. <sighs> People know. People know. Well, um, they come in here... I got the one guy who bought some gold, and he's afraid of all the hot spots around the world. And it's like, <coughs> and he brought up a good point. He's most concerned about the Israelis and the Iranians. And the one thing I always respected about the Israelis, they, they are backed up to the sea. And there's a number of countries, there's what, what 1.3 billion people have sworn death upon them. They got nowhere to run. They got to stand and fight. And, you know, it's the kind of thing where they, they, don't seek, they don't seek permission. It's easy to get forgiveness than permission. And if the Iranians, to get too close, because they've sworn to blow them up, you might see some crazy stuff around the Persian Gulf. Really? And I think there's a chance of that. Because they'll just strike. When you get too close, there's going to be a sudden explosion in the middle of Iran or Tehran. Scary stuff. I mean, crazy stuff. Yeah. I right, don't, you know, people are not afraid of our government. You know, there's no respect for it. Because there's no, they're not uh, strong, <laughs> strong armed right now. Well, it's just you know, that. look, it's what I said in the beginning. You know, you look at the, the you look at uh, the Ukraine. Now they're not perfect people, but they never would have made this move with the other president. That's just a fact. Yeah. You know. Anyway. Uh, more rapid fire questions from the fans. All right, so Alan. Um, wants to know um, if anybody's brought any kind of metals that have been like excavated. So like, you know, treasure finds of uh, metal detecting. Uh, I'm going to say no. Coin guy's always so busy. I must have gotten 70 phone calls the week I was home. I'm sorry. That's okay. But uh, <laughs> I mean, I even had the sign on the door. And, uh, you know, uh, no, not recently. No treasure coins recently. No. And once again, like with treasure coins, like I've said before, you got to be real careful because you get a person who show, you know, where's your provenance for this? Show me what you're talking about. And, they, well, here's a photo. Yeah, but the idea with that photo is going to match the coin you're showing me. This is a nice photo, but it's not that coin. Yeah, you can run off 50 of these photos and get a bunch of these coins and name every one from the Atosha. You know, I saw this coin on eBay uh, from the 1715 fleet, and of course it's raw, 
um, looks you know authentic from the pictures and it has a paper with it with the picture of the coin saying that it was an authentic piece from the 1715 fleet I was wondering if that does go to like PCGS or NGC are they gonna take the paper's word for it I mean they've got no proof that thing, thing came out of the water really well that's what I guess they have a way of well you would if you match the coin and then you're right. I don't know. It's a piece of paper, though. Yeah, it's just I mean, just we got paper. the internet now. We can we do can all kinds fun, of crazy well, stuff. <laughs> they can make really... If I put a few hundred dollar bills on my copy, not that I would, they come up pretty good with a color printer, a jet printer. Yeah. You know, they look really good. <clears throat> I mean, so yeah, they could they could photostatic. Do we got to get the Secret Service in here? Guys? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you and your, your mm. copy and money, huh? counterfeiting. All right, uh, another question. Uh, Philip wants to know, we heard about your, your missed opportunity. Philip wants to know your best cherry pick as a collector. I was at the 110 show. And there were, this is two things, actually, I picked up. I think it was within a week of each other. Uh, there were piles of, um, piles of seated half dollars. And the guy wanted seven and a half dollars a piece for them. And they were AGs. They were pretty beat up. And I'm looking through them, and I'm looking at this, seven, this 1873, and I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, this is an open three. And the, it's either the open or the closed that's a really rare variety. And I thought it was the other variety, so I, I paid the 750 for it. I took it to a couple of dealers. They said, no, you're wrong, you're wrong. I sent it into Annex. I was right. I sold that coin for $1,100 when it was certified. They bought the plastic. They wouldn't take the kids, because I was probably in my 20s when I bought that. And then another time, I had a bunch of scrap silver, and I had nothing to do, and I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at the Type 1s, and there's a few diagnostics to tell the 1916 quarter, and I had paid two and a half times face for this silver. And I'm talking, this was probably, well, maybe this was around 93 1990. This was probably 30 years ago, more, maybe 35 years ago. But sure enough, I the looking at the diagnostics, the coil on the back of her head, the the lines of the skirt at the bottom. I said, this is a 16. I think it's a 16. It was a Type One coin. It didn't have the stars underneath the eagle on the back. I sent it into Annex. They gave me an AG on it. Had no date. Hmm. They gave me an AG. I sold that to a dealer at a show for about 400 when the 16 was going for 1000 That coin's probably worth 1500 just because of the plastic. Wow. I think those are pretty cool cherry picks. Yeah, man. Especially as when I was learning and still a novice, but two pretty, one legendary coin in 1916 quarter, and the other one was just a cool variety. And that guy had that coin forever, Rubenstein's. I know he had that coin for 15... When I moved here, he still has that coin. It Man. just was a very hard... To, and the thing about that coin is the population is less than 100 known. Just hard to sell. That's but then again, when you sell it to him for 11, and he put it up for like 2350 Hold on, you got to try and sell the thing. <laughs> I mean, how much? Anyway, that those were, my, those were two cool cherry picks. That's fun. Uh, last question right here. Um... My Silver Journey, is his name, asks, do you think that platinum is ever going to catch back up to gold? I can't understand what happened there. They tell me it has to do with the catalytic converters on trucks, and they use platinum. But I always thought to use rhodium mostly on all that stuff. But, you know, rhodium's like 12000 an ounce. Platinum's around 1000 I mean, for most of my life, and when I did precious metals all the time, I remember when gold hit 2000 Platinum was 2,400. Uh, platinum was always 20, 30% more than gold. Now it's half the price. And you just never see it. Even in jewelry, I never see it. Yeah. It comes in very rarely. And to be honest with you, when it comes in, I'm just holding it aside for inventory. Because platinum, you know, when you're buying platinum, you got to buy it at the price of 10 karat gold. And it's still platinum. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that one day it's going to have its day, you know. Because it is a rare metal. It's 15 times rarer than gold, or what I've read and yeah. what reports say. 
And it's weird because I, I thought that the catalytic converters that they had, like platinum, palladium, rhodium, all those platinum, you know, family metals in there, but you would think that they would only use the cheapest, which right now would be platinum. Fawn away. Yeah. I mean, rhodium is 12 times the price of platinum, even if you got to put it on twice as heavy. I mean, it isn't about the weight. I remember a guy when I first moved here, I knew a coin dealer who worked three days a week and he used to buy scrap uh, catalytic converters and he would sell the catalytic converters. And I remember him telling me the best catalytic converter out there used, a beat up one, junkyard one, were, I think it was the Cougars. I think it was a Cougar. And they were, they were like $600. They had a lot of platinum Just in them. Just for that piece, wow. Yeah, platinum with the rhodium. I'm not sure what he was after. But he made a serious amount of money working three days a week. Yeah. And that's what he used to buy it and then sell the scrap. Speaking of, uh, you know, you always word that, use that word shellacking. Talk about rhodium taking a shellacking, huh? Yeah. It's really come down. If you were some kind of rhodium, if you could get the stuff, I mean. It's all about production out there. You know, I was watching Mornings of Maria the other day. And there's this one girl on there. It's got short blonde hair. I think she's kind of cute. And she's a financial person. And she's explaining how you look at the CPI and you look at this and you look at that. And they're saying, well, you know, the CPI is up 3%. So you don't really have this or you don't really have that. Well, CPI might be up 3%, but that's because of inflation the product you're buying has raised 15%. When in actuality, you're about 10% back. In units, you're a lot less, but the actual cost of them is increased yeah. only because the price of, of, of the material. I was just reading an article in the Wall Street Journal. Half the reason I got the journal is because of articles that are buried in there. And he had these pitches in, in all the ports along China. 60,000, 80,000, 100,000 containers are laying empty. They're piled six high. Their production is way down. You don't have, they've returned, was it, I forgot how many, I'm thinking it was like 200 container ships that they were leasing, they've given back to the leasees. Because the cost and stuff of going out, for instance, a year ago now, when Pete Buttigieg used to meet all those container ships on the on the uh, West Coast, you know, because he was the transportation person, and he would, but the containers to rent then were sixteen thousand dollars. Sixteen thousand dollars to rent a container. Do you know what the cost is now? What is it? Way more. Twelve hundred bucks went down. Crashed. You're looking at seven cents on the dollar. That's crazy. So in other words, if you had a container filled with, let's say, 1,200 air conditioners, and that used to cost you 16000 maybe it's costing you $15 an air conditioner, but now it would only cost you a dollar an air conditioner to ship it. But if they pass that on to the consumer. He said, it's like when somebody was telling me, when you look at the price of breakfast and you get an X amount of dollar, what does it take for them to drop that price? If they can, I mean, every time I go there, they, they might as well just write the menu on a chalkboard because they've got to keep changing the rest of the menus. Yeah. Because it's like two for 15 is now two for 40. And the price just keeps going up. Or they just give you less. But the point <laughs> is, Chinese production is way down. And if shipping is, is off by those numbers, it was in Wall Street Journal this weekend. And like I said, it went from like, I think the numbers were like twelve five, and it's now it was sixteen thousand and change, and it's now like twelve five to rent the big container. Craziness. I wonder how much it can they make a good storage unit? Yeah, I think they'd be people make cool. houses out of them. You ever see those uh, tiny houses? Yeah, Isaac. Well, it's probably bigger than a tiny house. Well, but I remember house. as a kid we used to play clubhouse. They'd make a cool clubhouse. It'd be pretty big. Oh, that'd be super Almost like cool. a condo. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got to thank you, guy. Um, you know, sometimes you give us some history, and I remember, you know, early on when I met you, you talked about um, a little fellow in our history called Elliot Ness. Remember that? Yeah. Didn't know who that was, but, you know, you mentioning that name, I went and did my homework. I watched some, you know, shows and did some Google searching, and I found out who that was, and I was... Uh, He's now in Yellowstone. Is he? 
<laughs> it's the guy I, playing him. I don't watch Yellowstone. Okay. I got to Listen, I, I'm slow to get to those uh, series. I'm going to work on Yellowstone at some point in my future. But I was amongst some uh, some buddies, and we were talking about uh, weapons. And um, one of the guys said, what do you think? You're like Elliot Ness or something? And I said, oh, you think I'm untouchable? And I just thought it was a funny little comeback, and I wouldn't have known. And it was good. It was a good comeback. I wouldn't have known what that was if it wasn't for you. So thank and you And did it much. go over his head, or he knew? Uh, he smiled, and so you never know. When somebody smiles and nods, you, you wonder if they get it, or they're just trying yeah, to. They would have to get it, because, you know. I mean, the series was on TV for a decade, <laughs> the Untouchables. But, but, uh, yeah. but that's, that's your fault. You're an influencer. You influenced me to uh, you know, go out and do a little research, and so thank you for that. Well, I enjoy doing it. I, the reward is in itself when the parent comes in and my son now collects, or I get the phone call, or I get... I got this the other day, actually. Oh, oh. Where is it? Yeah. Oh, can we read that? Let's see. I'm gonna try to, painted it. It's, it's an owl. It says, Coin Guy, thanks for the laughs. laughs on YouTube. Do I make you laugh? We think you're hilarious. My wife knows you like owls, so she painted one for you. She painted that? That's pretty cool. Yeah, I thought it was like a I picture. I like that. It's like, the, it's like one of the snowy owls. That's a pretty... My wife's been painting owls. What's her name? Anita? Is that right? Anita? Who's that? The, the artist right there where she signed it on the bottom left. I can't see that. Well, that's pretty, though. It's su I thought it was a picture Anita, of an owl. yeah. That's well done. Yeah, I got that. It's Very mentioned. talented. I get a lot of thank you letters. I appreciate them from people. I don't always mention them all, but I appreciate the time that you take to mail it to me. And... Uh, and you're touching lives, and you're trying to teach, and, and if I can get a young person to open a book or to learn something about history, that's what it's about. Like I've you know, often said, if you, if you don't learn from history, you're, you're doomed to repeat it. The fun thing to do is, like, you get all these coins from different years, and you have ancients here from, you know, B.C. times. You know, do a little Google search. What happened in that year B.C.? You, know, you have the coin in your hand. You know, use that as a starting point. And you'll find exactly. some inform information out there. It's kind of neat. Who ruled in different countries? How are the how are these coins moving? Usually, when people come to visit and they come in from different states and they come down and they go to Disney, they'll come by. They usually buy an ancient, or they buy if they're from if they're from Europe, they usually buy a Civil War token. Okay. There's a mystique about the Civil War, um, you know. And ancients are usually people from around here because there's a heck of a lot more ancients in Europe and around the, uh, you know, Croatia and all around there. They're still digging up pots. I think of the Civil War. Um, I think it's off of uh, 75. Somebody's flying a massive Confederate flag. Oh, Have you I've seen, seen this that. Thing? Yeah, I saw that years ago. Oh, massive. Massive one. Woo! He owns the land from what I understand. He does what he wants, right? Yeah, it's his flag. I just can't believe how big that thing is. I like, had to have that thing specially made. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would think a storm's coming in, you better pull it down. It might just blow the pole over with it. Golly. Picks up a lot of resistance, which is like all them poor whales dying along the coast, the east coast. You know, you got those wind turbines being built. I don't know. I'm hearing all that concrete ain't good, and all that hammering's not good, and all the vibrations are not good. I think you're confusing the whales, and they're killing them. Oh. You know, where is Greenpeace? Well, they work off of, like, sonar, right? So all yeah. the sounds is probably jacking them up. Yeah, well, they got, what, 42 dead whales in the last few months. Man. I mean, some of these things are just, you better sit back and really look at it. You know, what's killing the whales? Is we know the turbines kill thousands of birds every year. Tens of thousands. So the albatross is flying along. Suddenly it's twilight and you don't see the blade. Whack. He dead. <laughs> Shark food. Jesus. Well, the sharks will be doing good at least. Where's the Audubon <laughs> Society? You know. Golly. Crazy. Okay. Anything else you got? I think that's, uh, I think I covered most bases. Yeah. Like I said, God bless America and just hang in there. Things will get better and we will talk again. Thank you. Guy, thank you so much. Take it easy. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye.